Welcome to the show. A bit later, I'm going to share with you what I experienced of, yesterday, of Wednesday's meeting. In an extensive two-day, give me a break investigation. That's later in this broadcast. But first, we're going to do something like we've never done before. We're going to have a guest here. I mean, as y'all know, back years ago, at the very beginning of the show, we talked about bullying in schools. The very first one, we talked about bullying in schools. The second episode, we focused in on one, one co-worker, one person, whose son was bullied at CCISD. And then during that time, the board, the Board of Education at CCISD was there to openly express how they feel and tell their story. Because back then, CCISD did not do shit but spend our tax dollars on a new Carroll, on a new Carroll High School building. If you didn't understand before, I'll explain, explain to you again. That must be him. So, yes, sir, you're gonna give me a break. Yeah, how's it going? Eric? Yes, sir. This, to the viewers, this is Eric. He created the, something that's called Stop Bullying CCISD. He's here to, he's here, he's here for an exclusive interview. So, so, uh, you'll probably hear, you'll probably hear some of the, uh, Explanation. So, let me ask you, what inspired you to create this uh, group on Facebook? Well, it started back in 2018 when my little niece was bullied at South Park Middle School. Uh, at the time, the uh, bureaucracy or the administration of CCISD were doing uh, this complaint there in the road. There was no enforced policy or there was no enforced uh, <clears throat> some of the bullying laws that were in place. They weren't being enforced. So we decided to uh, protest outside of the South Park Middle School, and uh, really nothing got done. So we just we started to go basically on a little tour around Corpus Christi, and we went to each school that had a hot spot, which we identified as a hot spot. And we protested. We signed up petitions. Many parents signed the, the petition to stop the bullying, and then we created an online Facebook uh, group called Stop Bullying at CCISD, so that more parents can be together. We, we also added teachers, principals, administrators, community leaders, so that we all can come together as stakeholders to end bullying. Yeah, right. As you know, I, as you know, part of the show, I've uh, this show expresses my number one topic of education because we have to give kids the best education they can get, besides uh, and help them learn how to speak up and uh, not be the victim because bullying is just like unacceptable. And in the past. Yeah. What were you going to say? I said, that's right. I agree with you 100% on that. And so, like, in the past, I talked to you, talked to the viewers about the uh, the article that happened with uh, Crystal Gluth and her son. I mean, that got my attention because she was a former employer of mine who was a former general manager at McDonald's here in the Bluff. Yeah, and, and, you know, that was just a tragic incident that happened in our, in our uh, school district. And what happened was uh, a little boy uh, was in the restroom. Her son was in the restroom, and another kid came in, uh, used the restroom, and held him inside the, the bathroom stall. He was trying to get out. And what happened was uh, when he was trying to get out, the door opened up, and his fingers were in between the door jam and the door, and the kid kicked the door and ultimately uh, chopping the tip of his finger off, and um, he left. So that kind of raised concerns of bullying in my perspective and also mental illness. Now I understand there were like two to three sides of every story. Did you find like this, the assistant principal, the, uh, like I understand the assistant principal said it was a different story from a different hallway and a different bathroom. Which side do you believe was to be true on? The assistant principal side or Crystal Blue's side or Crystal Blue's side? Well, I, originally uh, Crystal Blue called up to the school and uh, the assistant principal originally said, hey, this is just an accident. Uh, your son's screaming here down at the school. They never called the ambulance or anything, and he was just basically bleeding out in the nurse's office, crying. Um, so uh, to say that this is an accident is uh, it's, it's baseless. It doesn't have any type of ground to sit here and say that this is an accident. When the little boy uh, 
I understand you went to the board meeting to to hear all all sides of the story from people who had been a bully before. Like, which part of the, were you at the board meeting that day? Yes, I organized the event. We I organized an event called uh, Concerned Parents uh, Against Bullying, and uh, this was just the, actually the second incident that happened. We had another incident of uh, two weeks prior to that where I had to file a complaint with the uh, Board of Education. I'm sorry, the the educa- uh, Department of Education because uh, the CCISC has uh, left, left, left these complaints underneath the rug and nothing's really being done. No enforce policies. There's just, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a mess. Uh, but, you know, we organized it at, during that time and right before we were going to, to do this at the, uh, the board meeting, uh, this happened with Crystal Gluck and her son at Glory Hicks Elementary, so it kind of... Uh, inflated or sparked more interest of parents to coming on in and talking against bullying. I actually didn't know Wednesday I went to a meeting in Flower Bluff with the, where Dr. David Freeman, the superintendent of Flower Bluff, is going to build a uh, new police department, and he's very concerned about all these uh, things that are happening from shooting to bullying. So you can, what you can kind of compare for that is where CCISD is building, had a, has its own uh, police department to where I don't want to get off topic here, but uh, they're going to build their own, they're going to, Flop is going to build their own police department, and you can kind of simplify their way of bully, the bullies not reporting, of the people who are actually bullying not reporting to the police. Yeah, I think that's a great thing, uh, coming from the uh, Flower Bluff Independent School District. Originally, uh, how I really actually, actually got involved in the bullying was back in 2015 when my cousin committed suicide due to bullying. His name was Teddy Molina. They have a big shrine of him in there in front of the uh, Flower Bluff uh, High School. Uh, he was bullied by uh, what they called the Wolf Pack back in the day. Uh, and uh, it was a terrible scene. He had been bullied actually since middle school. And it ultimately took the life of my own cousin. And that what sparked me to get involved in criminal justice, get involved in bullying. And when I went to college, I, I made sure that I did everything I could to talk about bullying and in, in, in the future to come with what, what the issue is going to be today, 2020. This was back in 2015, 2014. Were there any, uh, what did Fly Bluff do back in 2015 to help you out with your son that was bullied here in the Bluff? Uh, it wasn't my son, it was my cousin. I mean, your cousin, uh, sorry, your cousin. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And, and, and they didn't do anything, they brushed it under the rug. Um, from some of the uh, hearsay or some of the uh, the advice from other students were saying that, hey, the, the, the people that were bullied, Teddy Molina, were part of the football team, and the football team was actually their first time Flower Bluff going to the state championship. Uh, uh, they were going to a state championship game, and they didn't want to make a big fuss against the, the, the football team because they would have ultimately been expelled or ultimately been suspended, and it, it, it got brushed underneath the rug over there as well. Right, and as you know, part of the show, I uh, I created a campaign what called Speak Up, meaning to like help help kids learn how to speak up when they're being bullied, when they're being, when victims are being bullied and stuff. And I understand what you're saying that these incidents can happen when we need to teach children how to speak up, and we have to train it. We have to train educators and administrators how to tell children how to tell children to speak up. So I think if you and I can, like, so I think if the show and you and the show, you and me, can like express some of these feelings, some some of the uh, issues that we talked about, that I talked about on the show, and what you told me about. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can help out and uh, right, work yeah. together. So uh, I mean, if, if kids are, you know, have a problem speaking up and, and telling their, their parents, uh, you know, that they're being bullied at school, I think that they need to find somebody who they can trust, either their parents, their grandma, their grandpa. Uh, uh, a teacher that they can really trust so that this uh, issue at school can be uh, eliminated. And it, it's very hard for children to trust somebody. And I think trust is probably the biggest foundation that we have to build bullying on. We have to trust one another that, hey, if I tell you that I'm being bullied, are you going to do something about it? Yeah, because I see, we see all... We see. We, we, we've deteriorated this trust in CCRD because kids are saying, hey, we're, we're, we're being, I'm being bullied and, and nothing's being done about it. So it, it becomes a normal thing, but actually it's an, an abnormal thing. I mean, not to sit here and say that I wasn't unscathed in middle school, but, um, you know, I, I got punched. I got, um, I got talked about bad uh, verbally, physically, and emotionally. And now we see, we're seeing a bigger thing going on. We're seeing 
Yeah, I think the big advice would be for all parents listening at home is for you guys to unplug. Don't just like unplug your phones and stuff. Just unplug this stuff. Like if someone calls you saying, I want you to die. If someone like at the mid sense, I want you to, you hang up. That's it. You unplug. No one's there because no no cameras are there because no one wants to uh, no cameras are there because no one wants to be peeping in the bathroom. We need to put cameras outside the bathroom where they won't look into the stalls. And if students have a problem with that, well, we need to address these to every school district everywhere. I honestly think that we need to take off the doors of these restrooms at school, but that's just my opinion. We'll just put uh, put the cameras in the doors. As you know, I've uh, I've been a victim of bullying myself. I mean, back in like sixth grade, some girl named Sheila picked on me, which she said that was just a joke. I don't take bullying like let me say something at home. I do not take bullying as a joke. I take this seriously. And if you watch Dr. Phil Eric, I tell you something. Dr. Phil takes this bullying very seriously. I take to what was done very seriously. I take this show very seriously. I take all these topics very seriously. said part of the show is I would recommend to them go to a different school district like London ISD or Flower Bluff follow -ups. like in my opinion I heard from Dr. Allman Flower Bluff is the best school district to be because because it's probably the best school district here because I don't know if because uh, if you haven't seen me on the street I play guitar a lot and some people pick on me some people like it most people like it some people pick on me but I try to let the haters be motivators Yes, well, 
Yes, we'll put the link to the, the group in the description below if you guys want to join for Corpus Christi. And if you guys want to take part in the bullying, we'll put the three parts of bullying in it. I'll put the three parts of bullying in the description below. And I want to, th and, uh, there's anything else you want, any tips you want to give to our viewers out there that are watching how to stop bullying? Yeah, I, I, you know, I just want to let everybody know that, you know, uh, stop bullying at CPI is D, has been very, you know, future. Thank you, Eric Lee, for uh, from Stop CCISD, Stop Bullying CCISD for joining us. And I want to name him the greatest motivational speaker on this show that I can ever have. Thank you very much, Mr. Moe. I'll probably have you on in, on our next segment. Okay, thank you. You have a great day. Bye-bye. God bless. You too. Bye-bye. Alright. Now that was going on. we got to take a break. Next year, next year on the show, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, the meeting that the meeting that I went to on uh, on Wednesday here to talk about the new the new police department CCISD. You're going to hear some things that I did not talk about in that meeting. And want to talk about the meeting, so y'all let me ask me, what did you do with the meeting? Did you videotape the meeting? I didn't videotape the meeting, but you'll see what I have after the break. Welcome back to the show. Now, Tuesday on the show, I talked to you about a meeting that it's going to happen, that would happen, happen on Wednesday, where Superintendent Dr. David Freeman is going to present a brand new police department here in the Bluff. I want to point out some things that I didn't say at the meeting because I didn't want I didn't want everything to become an outrage. If I could find it, oh, it's up here. There are some points that uh, I want to just. Like, I already like read you some parts of the uh, notes here. Something like if Freeman decides to do this, then it could be a big issue for our tax dollars and not help the students. Wasting a lot of our money. It's good to have off-duty police officers and security, but not a good waste of like a million or thirty thousand dollars in a huge police department. I mean, that's why there was one right by Parker Pool, and it could cut down truancy. And these are just the rest of the notes. I mean, these are just the rest of the notes. I mean, the introduction. I mean, EOP. I mean, law enforcement is just the grizzly and a teddy bear. I mean, FPSC is like the highest tax rate. I mean, $819,382. I mean, I mean, if you were to look at these, I mean, I mean, the chief of police was report superintendent. Like, yes, that is the most important thing ever. I mean, I mean, at the meeting he talked about like other schools, other shootings that happened, like in Santa Fe or or like in uh, like in Santa Fe or uh, Columbine. Columbine was like the first and. I mean, like 80-20. 80% said yes to the beginning of the 20% said no. But, but no one else didn't, I mean, these are, these are the tax notes I've done on, on Wednesdays, I mean, I mean, what, I mean, people will like ask you, even if you like, is this going to raise our taxes? And he's like, no, it's not going to raise our taxes. If you heard of this, if you were to listen to this recording device, let me play you part of it so you guys can understand. I don't know the you got to boost up your volume. Let me let me fast forward to the part 
where you use like all taxes and stuff. Well, exactly. I had some different thoughts about this. I did not want to share them on camera. I mean, the pool truck for Texas is like 9,000. Like, total is 45,986,733. Extraction per pupil is like 5,514. 27,862,000. The grand total of this would be 43,039,722 dollars of this. Now for the money of schools in Texas, I mean, currently, currently last year, it's 5140. Student funding is like 6160 and 5140. I want to get, now I also want to get to the uh, other notes I, I told you about. I mean, if you were to Google how much it would cost to like build a police, a police department, Now what you would have to do is probably go straight to the source. Like I want to mention it to this new security post that, that I didn't even talk about because I don't want people raising concerns and I don't want people criticizing me. I don't want people here in the book criticizing me about oh what needs to happen, what's not, because if we even say it's not gonna it's, it's not gonna raise our taxes or anything because it has nothing to do with tax. And if you were to go, if you were to talk to me and say, well, we have the biggest, highest tax money in Texas, like, I want, I want every school district to comment down below and on the show and tell me what is the biggest, highest tax rate. Because the biggest thing we need to do right now is, like, use that tax money to help students. That is, like, all we need to do. We need to help our students. Where we got to help students, like, Get the best education they can get by raising taxes, by uh, using that tax dollars to help students. So the new security permits that I have written down right here, like searches before students come in the, the school, it must be mandatory. So it's like going on an airplane, like they have you like, they like it's like going on an airplane, like, like they have you remove all the metal objects, keys, loose change, jewelry. And then you will go to the mail detector and they see you brought a weapon to school, they will immediately confiscate that, and then you will be sent to the office. Next, audio and surveillance and cameras. Yes, that is the biggest concern I have. Because I, when I work at McDonald's and I heard they were going to improve the cameras, my biggest concern was we need to put that in all school districts. All school districts. Need to have cameras in there. You need to have audio visuals and cameras. Extra backup, extra backup off duty police officers, like extra truancy officers. Like if one person's out, then the other the a substitute truancy officer can come in and fill in for him. Like if like if he's on vacation for like uh, ten days or so, then he can fill in for him. More cameras outside. I mean there's like one in the middle, like some outside. We need to get a, like a lot of cameras inside and Probably some of the bathroom because mostly that is where the bullying happens where cameras are not hidden in the bathroom. Probably put one in the sink or in the toilet. Now don't be looking at me like I'm a perv. This is just the biggest issue ever because people are being bullied and it's not a joke. Closed campus to actually be a closed campus means students leaving the property except to Except to the Ranowski gym and or across and or across the street to UP classes. Because if they were to leave the campus and and uh, they were to leave the campus, it'd be a big time safety issue. Because the biggest thing that I could ever do, I could ever see when I see people leaving is like, I mean, you don't have permission. And for the job applicants, I and mean, we need to put on there that. If they haven't completed high school, then they must complete their high school. They must complete high school. If not, then they can't. They cannot be able to work. So 
So let's go back to the building, the uh, police station. I mean, we have principals, we have assistant principals, we have administrators, we have the director of security and safety, we have the assistant. Now you all may ask me, where did you come up with this stuff? I mean, did y'all, I mean, I did some research on this. I mean, if you were to go to rsmeans.com, I mean, commercial construction cost per square foot. I mean, the one I the one I'm saying for sale across the street from the ECC is like 1.3, 1.43 acres. Acres. This was from the police. This is one of the data was released in 2013. Now the cost estimate for union labor is like total cost per S7 is like $149.23. The, the actual cost would be a million. One million six hundred forty-one thousand five hundred bucks. Contract fees with a total of twenty-five percent, thirty-seven dollars twenty-one cents. The the cost of this four hundred ten thousand four hundred bucks. Nine percent for contextual fees, nine percent, sixteen dollars seventy-nine cents cost of RSF, and the cost of one hundred eighty-four bucks and uh, seven hundred dollars. The total building cost is for all this. The total is two hundred three thousand three hundred thirty-two thirty-two cents. And the total is two million three hundred two hundred thirty six thousand five hundred dollars. That's for the union labor. Now to, for the open shop. The cost per SF, I mean, one hundred thirty nine dollars twenty seven cents. Twenty five percent of contractor fees. Architectural fees nine percent. Fifteen sixty seven thirty two eighty two. The cost, one million five hundred thirty-two thousand, three eighty-three thousand dollars, hundred seventy-two thousand four hundred dollars. The grand total of this was two million, like two million eighty-seven thousand four hundred dollars. The grand total of this for our tax dollars, if it was true, which I I understand, your Dr. Freeman, it's not. But I apologize. If it was true. That we would be paying two million two hundred twenty-five thousand nine hundred dollars. That's it. So our grand total again is two million two hundred twenty-five thousand and nine and nine hundred dollars. But these other options, like for walls and stuff. So I want to. So if uh, the if the superintendent of Star, superintendent of the Flop of Squizzers is watching, I apologize for recording the for recording the presentation. The reason why is because it's for my service coordinator of the Behavioral Health Center, which I am special needs. I have special needs diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder on autism spectrum and speech delay, and and. Uh, and if you want me to delete the audio recording, then I will do so. I will go on to take it down, take to delete the audio recording by order of the superintendent and the director of safety and security. So if you guys want to have Eric Lee back on the show for more bullying topics, I would be glad to have him back on the show because we we need a good motivational speaker to talk about this. I mean, this is the first time we ever had a guest on the show in three years. I mean. We'd be lucky to have him back again. So with everything that's going on, like my thoughts about this is I think it was I think it's a great idea for this. I think I think if it was if it was to be a build like at the same place, like right by a Parker Park, it would be remodeled. But if they were choosing a different spot, it wouldn't be far from my house. I can just go see it every day. I can go check it out. The viewers who give me a break would be impressed.
And I'll be willing to share this episode around. I mean, we have to make sure that, like, I want to hear everyone's thoughts about this. So, I'm going to share with you guys this, this, I want everyone around to share this episode. And see what all your thought process is on this. Alright. That's all the time we have for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next week. For a brand new edition. For a brand new week. The March edition of Give Me a Break. Have a good night, everyone.